आप आप पूरे ठीक है थैंक यू कनी मोजी जी thank you sir thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on the motion of thanks to the pre president's address we are all proud to be here we are all proud to be part of our parliament to be representatives of our people and in the president's speech she says that by 2047 we have to build a nation which not only embraces its glorious past but also encompasses every golden aspect of modernity sir we i'd like to bring to your notice that every country when it talks about its past it has different pasts different narrations of its past the history is very different from whose point of view we look at it so when we talk about a glorious past whose past are we talking about we talk about the greatness of this nation we talk about the valor we talk about the art literature the temples architecture and the philosophy but we cannot forget the people who found no space or place in history we cannot forget the untouchables the unseeables and the women who were pushed into fire in the name of honor Shit. today Shit. we celebrate Shit. that Shit. and i stand in this floor of this house hanging my head in shame because we had to listen to Shit. something Shit. like that Shit. 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 sir we have to understand that there we there is enough in this country to feel proud about and we also have enough to be ashamed about we have to embrace that we have to understand that we have to own up to that only then can we make amends to it only then can we make sure there is justice done to these people but this government this union government under the bjp tries to create a unitary culture promoting oneness one nation one ration one nation one tax one nation one market one language one exam one election one nation one religion one nation one party this is where what you're trying to lead to but we have you have to understand that that will never happen never this country has seen enough this country has withstood enough and our people the people of this nation will fight you continue to undermine the power of the states you continue to delegitimize the work we have done Shit. you continue to insult us you do not understand what a welfare state is and what freebies are you continue to call us names but we have set examples we have proved that we can create models of social justice we can create models of inclusive development which you have miserably failed Great, yes. to do so yes. sir unfortunately in 1967 when one of our leaders perasriya anbalagan was in the rajya sabha he said in november when he spoke he said that governors are being used as tools against states in rajya sabha ab ah perasriya he he said that governors are being used as tools against elected governments by the union government Shit. he said that sir he said it i am just quoting him Same I am just quoting Same him. I am just quoting him. I am just quoting him. I am just quoting him. Sir, the, 
Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu. Speak about Polish. You cannot speak about. Sir, so the Tamil Nadu government has delayed assent to around 20 bills passed by the Shame. state legislature, Shame. including crucial bills like prohibition of online gambling Shame. and regulation of online games. And it's just not Tamil Nadu which stands alone in this fight. We've seen what happened in West Bengal. Maharashtra. What happened in Maharashtra, in Kerala, the governor threatens to withdraw ministers, and in Telangana. Nagaland, in Telangana, yeah, every government which is not a which is a non BJP government, I think uh, we have to fight battles with the governor. But Dr. Ambedkar has rightly stated in the Constituent Assembly that the governor does not have any individual discretion and has to act according to the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers. I think this government, when it sends governors to states, which are non-BJP states, should ask them to read the speeches of Dr. Ambedkar, or at least kindly advise them what <laughs> this country stands for and what federalism is. Because you are the ones who keep talking about cooperative federalism. So you should teach them to cooperate and understand the importance of federalism. But you do not listen. You could not listen to this, uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi when he spoke here. You were interrupting because you're not used to listening. It is a, something which you don't know what, how to do. Listen to sense. Listen to sense. But, and, and uh, I think this year you forgot in Tiruvalluvar because uh, there are no elections in Tamil Nadu. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd like to remind you, Idipare illade, Yemara mannan kedupare illanum kedu. It me, yes, I, I am translating because, of course, you did not make the attempt to, attempt to learn any South Indian language. You only want to impose Hindi on us. None of you <laughs> understand Sanskrit. any South Indian language. Sanskrit. A king without an honest, critical council needs no enemies to come to ruins. So if you do not listen to what the opposition says, to what the people say, to what the press says, to what people have to say to you, then you do not need enemies to bring you to ruins. This is what the government has been curtailing the freedom of speech vehemently, both inside and outside of the parliament. And it tries to create an aura of fear in many ways. We know, with all the tools in your hands, and shame, shame. Shame on your tools. Your tools, yeah. All your tools. This government, your this tools. government, your this tools. government has actively diminished this government, this is not dealing. This is not dealing. This government has actively diminished the space available for dissent, debate, and discussion. Making the people voiceless does not ensure continued power, but it will create simmering discontent and resentment. You don't know when it will become into flames. You cannot rule by fear and fear alone. The president said, that the, in her speech said, that the country no longer suffers from policy paralysis. But I think it has moved to a dictatorial policy making. Sometimes I am reminded of Alice in Wonderland. I don't know whether I'm in the parliament or in the court of the Queen of Hearts. She just needed no reason to pass a sentence. She needed no reason. She could not listen to any reason. So sometimes you feel that is where you are, in the court of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Because the government does not understand that the parliament here is, is to legislate but it believes in bulldozing all the businesses. There are no pre-consultation policies. Parliamentary uh, committee recommendations are unheeded. 
and every time we have to repeat we have to repeat what we recommend and still the government does not listen to us because they are not used to it and mo most of the bills are not circulated to the members earlier so there's no opportunity for the members to be able to research read it understand it because you only believe in bulldozing the bills and the number of days the parliament functions it's shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and i don't know we might just have symbolic days when the parliament will function and then we'll all be sent home the prime minister doesn't even come to the parliament all it was right three times a year the honorable president also said that the world bank report acknowledged that india was able to prevent crores of people from falling below poverty line during the covid pandemic but the same world bank report also also mentions that it was the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act which played a role in mitigating the impact of yes. poverty it is a clear indication of the success of the scheme brought by the upa government but during this year's budget the allocation to manrega scheme is lowest in the last 4 years the previous year it was 73000 crores this year it is 60000 crores and but you are very proud of you know poverty alleviation and this is a more one of the most important schemes and you've reduced 13000 crores from it there is demand there is still demand there is still demand if if you please there can come and see don't answer don't answer don't answer don't answer there is no demand there is no demand there is no demand from being 63rd position in global hum, hunger index our country has slipped to the 107th share rank share and nearly 4 crore indians youth are looking for jobs share they are unemployed yes. is this the growth you are talking about and in the midst of all this i don't think i have to go into detail because it was spoken but in the midst of all this the government is turning a blind eye and we saw the virulent strong support which the treasury benches had when issues like corporate misgovernance and adani was brought up here how strongly you responded to it reacted to it Support. and supported it and uh, you were shielding it shielding it <laughs> shame shame so the sad thing is there is a misgovernance and there's a manipulation of valuation but your reply is only one which says that it is against the nation it's unpatriotic it is against india the same hindenburg report the same hindenburg institute hindenburg has given reports about 15 institutions some in the us some in china none of these countries said it is against the country it was against the institution but when we are talking about adani it becomes against the country anti oh. so i i i am really confused i really want you you started calling india bharat now i want to know what is the next progress what is india what is adani if talking against adani is talking against india i really want a clarification you become anti indian <laughs> and what happens to the common people people who believe in hard work who think that they can save their money because it is a government bank and they will trust lic what happens to their future 
they uh, they trust LIC because they think the their children's futures are protected. How do you? What is the answers you have for them? Is this the way you respond to these hardworking common people of this country? And this government is very happy to close down every public sector undertaking. If it is profit making, sell it to Tata's. <laughs> if it is, <laughs> or not, they do not come forward to help them, support them, and make sure that they are run. They want to close it, they want to sell it off. But then when it comes to a private corporate, why is the government going out of its way to support it, to help? And why are you protecting it? We want to understand what is the proximity. Without these answers, people are going to continue asking these questions. And people are going to be anguished about the future of their children. Sir, so, madam, you talk about women's empowerment. I'm sure you, we all here as women have this question to ask. What happened to the women's reservation bill? Yes. <laughs> They're anti-women. They're against yeah, the women's because, development. Because, because you believe that the only way to make sure that a woman is honorable is to push her into the fire or behead Shame. her. Shame. Shame. They, be they believe in Sanadana. <laughs> Sir, we've seen 27 parliament sessions after this government which in its election manifesto said that there will be 33% reservation in the assemblies and in the parliament has come to government. But nothing has been done about the women's reservation bill. You do not care about the people. You do not care about the oppressed, the suppressed. Our chief minister of Tamil Nadu, M.K. Stalin, in many occasions, has written and demanded for conducting socio-economic caste census yes. at a national level to find out about the true demography of the country, which will truly help She's the, only the speaker, people. She's the only speaker. But I don't understand what is stopping you from doing that. So you talk about tribal welfare. What is happening in Greater Nicobar Island? You're displacing the indigenous tribes over there for infrastructure projects. And I don't know who it goes. Definitely going to go Adani. To. Adani. Adani. And the governor over there is trying to change their lifestyle, denying them their right to eat what they want to choose to eat, to live, and to sell what they want to, and to trade what they want to. So is this the tribal rights? Is this the tribal welfare you are talking about? Sir, so the Prime Minister keeps talking about the greatness of Tamil language. But when the fund allocation comes, the Central Sanskrit University gets 198.83 crores. Shame. Whereas the Central Institute of Tamil Classical Studies got only 11.86 crores. Shame. Shame. This 11.86 crores does not even cover the administrative costs. Shame. How can research, how can uh, symposiums be conducted? So last, only speaker, so ma'am. Only speaker. A few minutes, ma'am. And, and women have been insulted a lot in this. Um, house today, so I think we deserve some more time. <laughs> Respect women. Sanskrit has been ma mandated. <laughs> in the Kendra Vidyalaya schools. But not the regional languages. Shame. So you talk, and you talk about the Indian culture seeing a renaissance in your government. Which Indian culture? Why are you again leaving us out? We know how you, the Kiradi report, which says 
that the Sangam era dates back to the 16th century BCE has not even been published two minutes, two minutes. by she's, this government. She's concluding. She's concluding. And the finance minister Time promised us man. Okay. an on-site museum in Aadhi Chanalu in three stop. years and we have not got it. You talk about medical colleges, 260 medical colleges, but the Madurai Ames, <laughs> which was the foundation stone was laid by the prime minister four years ago. Nothing, no work has happened. Shame. Naipa. We are waiting for 13 years after giving 116 acres of land free of cost Shame. to the union government, and we are still waiting. Work has not started, money has not been allocated. Same Shame. story Shame. when it comes to the Shame. 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 I'm just finishing. Up. I'm just finishing. Okay. Last, last 30 seconds. The need. 30 seconds. The need. The need today. Yes. It is not. It's become a national elimination and eradication test. You want to leave us out. You Shame. want to leave people, children who deserve to go to medical colleges. You want to cut them out. You told you're bringing meat to regulate the fees. But today, free. the colleges are but important, important, giving, very important. Impo giving seats to only children who can afford the exorbitant fees in these colleges. So where is the justice and fairness to students who come from poor families but yet have the aptitude and the talent to become doctors? The scholarships were scrapped. The minority scholarship was scrapped. One para, last para. Last para. Railway projects. Railway projects. Southern Railway. We are getting not even one tenth of what the Shame. Northern Railways get. Official and issues in Tamil Nadu are unresolved. You have to use diplomatic channels to resolve it, which uh, unfortunately you're not doing. Sir. Okay. Ma last, point. Last, point. last point, last point, last point, last point. Last point. You say last that point. we can walk, we have time to walk together. Uh, How can last you, we walk together? If you don't recognize us, if you insult us, Shame. we do not and do not accept us. We cannot walk together, and this nation will not walk with you.